Today is the day. Facebook's new VR headset, the Oculus Quest 2, has released. We've been waiting for this for a long time. I've been using this headset like crazy for the past two weeks, and now we're here for my full review. I'm going over everything I could think of, mic quality, virtual desktop capabilities, tracking, usability, and I'm gonna try and cover absolutely everything about this headset and what I've learned about it and what I think of the actual device. But in case you're here and you just want a really quick answer, the Oculus Quest 2 is absolutely the best value headset that has ever released up until this point, but it's definitely not the best headset and falls short in a few categories while excelling in others. Now, if you wanna know why, keep watching. So this review is going to be stacked into categories so it's easier to digest because there's a lot I gotta say and cover and I don't wanna waste anyone's time. Starting with the initial experience using the Oculus Quest 2, video, audio, tracking, virtual desktop, and PC VR use. And then I'll wrap things up and tell you if this is the right headset for you or if you should upgrade. Right off the bat, I'll say if you're considering a Quest 2 as your very first headset, I don't think there's been a better time to get into VR. And I don't think there's been an easier way to get into VR. For the Quest 2, you don't need a PC, you don't need base stations, you don't need anything, actually. You just throw on a headset and start playing. This is probably the first device I have charged, used until died, then charged again to play over and over and over, just rinse and repeat. Which might just be because of the two-hour battery life, or maybe it's because it's just a blast. Last year's Oculus Quest did standalone hybrid VR pretty well, but this headset, the Quest 2, improves on that formula in every single way. It's smaller, lighter, cheaper, faster, has higher fidelity visuals, and in my opinion, out of the box is more comfortable, even though it's still not all that comfortable. If this is going to be your main headset, I'd highly recommend upgrading to the Elite Headstrap if you can but it's exceptionally capable and presents insane value for your money, especially relative to just about any other VR headset out there. And if you're getting a little more advanced by hooking the Quest 2 into a PC, it's a perfectly viable option to play something like Half-Life Alex or Boneworks. It's the best headset that Oculus has made so far. But as you dig deep and see why this headset is so much cheaper than its competitors and so much more capable than a lot of them, the cracks begin to show. And as much as this first part of the review sounds like I'm just praising the Quest 2 endlessly, I want to be clear. This headset is not the end-all be-all king of VR. It's not best in class in any category besides standalone and wireless play, but instead does everything to an acceptable or more than acceptable level. And the first thing I want to touch on regarding that is the visual experience with the Quest 2. So the Quest 2 has a pretty high resolution for a VR headset, running at 1832 by 1920 per eye. Compare that to the Valve Index and the original Quest, which run at 1440 by 1600 per eye, and the jump is pretty impressive. And to put the visual experience simply, it pretty much looks like a very slightly better Valve Index with a lower field of view. However, there's an effect in VR headsets known as the screen door effect. It literally looks like you're looking in the virtual world through a screen door, and that's practically absent on the Quest 2. The image is sharp, and reading text or seeing things in the distance is pretty easy. However, it's worth mentioning that Oculus did this by using a single LCD panel, instead of the typical two you find on most other VR headsets. And this isn't much of an issue besides the fact that IPD adjustment gets more difficult. IPD is the distance between your pupils that has to match up correctly with a VR headset's lenses, otherwise the image is blurry. On most VR headsets, this is adjusted with the slider, but on the Quest 2, you have three physical settings to move the lenses at, 58mm, 63mm, and 68mm. I personally am right below 68mm at 67, so neither setting 2 or setting 3 look perfect to me. I'll never really be able to see the Quest 2 as clearly as possible, and that's just due to my body. And a lot of people will be in the exact same situation. None of the three settings are perfect. But I will say, for the mass majority of people, one of the settings will be good enough to where things will look clear and you don't get sick from using the headset or getting headaches. You just won't get the clearest image possible. And while it's not perfect, it is a decent solution to the IPD problem that was probably cheap to accomplish 
and should work for most people for the most part. <laughs> One thing to note though, is that if you're on the third setting, your FOV seems to be slightly reduced on the very sides. Now this headset already doesn't have the highest field of view. The index beats it pretty far. It's pretty much like a quest. So this reduction does kind of suck even if it's only a few degrees. And I'm not sure if it's because the lenses are reaching the ends of the displays or it's a weird software thing, but as you move the lenses for the IPD, the image also moves on the panel itself. This FOV cutoff did bother me at first since it was square, not a circle. And it is only on the third setting, which is the widest, but I got over it and it became somewhat of a non-issue. Now graphics wise, the Quest 2 in standalone mode and PC mode does look far better than the original Quest and Rift S. The high resolution mixed with the denser pixel arrangement gives Quest games a much crisper look and feel. And some games are actually upgraded for the Quest 2 hardware, having high resolution textures and more detailed models or better lighting, and they look really good too. Not up to par with PC, but you know, this is a freaking Android headset. And on that Android headset, you have a pretty sweet set of hardware, rocking the Snapdragon XR2, which has benchmarks significantly better than the Quest hardware. Even if games don't release a dedicated Quest 2 build, everything will look better and run better. The lag in menus or frame drops in action-packed areas are gone. One very clear example of this is the Quest version of VRChat, probably one of the worst running official Quest applications on the entire store. Even with all of its restrictions, it'll just crash where it runs poorly, but it does run significantly better on the Quest 2. I get nearly double the frame rate even with poorly optimized avatars on. Yes, PC avatars are still blocked, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, but the Quest build is way more stable. Looks better, runs faster, and this is a reoccurring theme across all of the Quest standalone content. Basically, things look better with a couple caveats, like IPD adjustment. But how does the Quest 2 sound? I tend to be very rough on the Quest and Rift S's audio design, saying in my last video that they're garbage, and I still hold true to that. They all have something called head strap audio, and that means that the sound comes through the head strap with these tiny speakers. And the reason why I'm rough on their audio is because in VR, you have pretty much two senses to stimulate for immersion. And since you can't smell or feel or taste in VR, the only things that you have are audio and visual. And I don't really like the onboard audio for the Quest 2. It's tinny, lacks bass, and doesn't do all that great of a job of spatial audio either. Plus, it lets in all the sounds of your surroundings. If the air conditioning is on, well, you're gonna be able to hear it. But Oculus does this audio design for a few reasons, and the biggest one is that it's cheap. Headstrap audio is way cheaper than designing some custom VR speakers like the Valve Index. And to give the Quest 2 some credit, the audio does work just fine. It does the job, just poorly in my opinion. If you want a super immersive experience, you're just gonna have to throw on some headphones, which is what I do, and I'm kind of okay with Oculus essentially not including good audio solutions in the box, if the price is as low as it is. Of course, I want better built-in audio solutions, and I'm open about not liking what is on the Quest 2, but at the end of the day, it does work. But what about the microphone quality? Because for someone like me, that's really important. Here's a microphone test between the Oculus Quest, Quest 2, and a Valve Index. Testing the microphone on the Oculus Quest. Testing the microphone on the Oculus Quest 2. Testing the microphone on the Valve Index. And it sounds pretty decent to be honest, and I haven't ran into the Rift S mic bug where it goes all robot, so that's a huge upgrade. And although the mic does sound a little compressed, it's not bad and will do the job better than a lot of the older headsets, especially something like the Rift. Now tracking. So the tracking is handled through the four cameras on the headset itself, meaning you of course don't have to set up anything externally, which is great, but means that full body tracking just got a whole lot more expensive if you're interested in that. The tracking quality has been pretty consistent for me, and there hasn't been a game or situation where I feel like I've done worse in the game because my tracking dropped. In something like Beat Saber, I was able to play just fine, and like I said before, I'm not a Beat Saber god, but here's some gameplay of me playing as fast as I can, and I can say confidently that if I fail a song, it was my fault, not the tracking. Now, how this scales up for pro play players or people that take Beat Saber extremely seriously, I don't know. I'm honestly not at a skill level to say that you can play the hardest beat map in the world on the Quest 2 and be just fine. But for me and my skill level and for everyone else I know, the Quest 2 has presented no issues in terms of tracking, both with Link, Virtual Desktop, and Standalone Mode. I will warn you though, the tracking quality is entirely dependent on your lighting situation. You will want to be in a well-lit play space. The worse your play space is lit, the worse your tracking will 
B. And of course, you lose tracking in just about all the same places as the previous quest. If your controllers go behind your back or far above your head, then the cameras can't see the controllers and you'll completely lose tracking. This is one thing that something like the Valve Index or HTC Vive does far better than the Quest 2, but at the cost of having to set up base stations. I'll also remark on the controllers, I don't find them as comfortable to hold as the original touch controllers or the Quest controllers. They feel a little off for me and I really can't explain why. They're just big in weird places. However, I've more or less just gotten used to it and I wanted to remark on them because I just don't find them as comfortable. One improvement, however, is the vibration and rumble feedback. It's hands down some of the best rumble on a VR controller, if that matters to you, of course. And the battery life is insane. Since I got the Quest 2, I'm still on 80% battery life on the AA that came with the controller. Also, the battery spring problem has been fixed from the previous iteration, meaning no more battery disconnections in hardcore Beat Saber sessions. Next is using the Quest as a PC VR headset. Now, in case you didn't know, the Quest 2 can work as a PC headset just like a Valve Index or Rift S by just plugging it into a USB. And I gotta be honest, this was the quickest and easiest Oculus Link experience I've ever had. Oculus Link on the original Quest has always been a little finicky and slow and a little glitchy, but here it felt really fast and easy. Of course, one update can completely throw that out of whack, but for me, on the build that I was on, it felt nice and easy. And latency for me was pretty imperceivable and I was just as mediocre at Beat Saber as I am on the Index. The compression of the image is still there from the original Oculus Link, but the resolution and actual visual experience does hide it, and it's not something you'll notice unless you're really looking for it. As a PC VR headset with Link, it's a hard recommend for me. It's better than the Rift S, better than the Quest, and leaps and bounds better than the original Oculus Rift. Now here's the interesting part. Playing VR games wirelessly on a PC using virtual desktop and Wi-Fi 6. Because yes, the Quest is capable of Wi-Fi 6 as long as you have a router that can do it. It's what I've been doing and my god, it's pretty darn good. A little more latency than the standard Link, but hardly much that I could notice. Video quality was good, tracking was still the same, and this really makes me wonder why Oculus doesn't just make wireless streaming a normal feature on the Quest 2. We're at a point now where the quality rivals that of the wired Link, but that's a thought for another time. Using SideQuest and Virtual Desktop is the exact same process as on the original Quest, just a little faster. Especially if you have a Wi-Fi 6 capable router, there's literally no reason to ever buy something like an HTC Vive wireless adapter to play wireless VR unless you really need base station tracking for like full body tracking. I will confidently say at this time, the Oculus Quest 2 is ironically, and as much as I freaking hate to say it, the best wireless PC VR headset out there. Now, if we're talking wired, the Quest 2 doesn't hold a candlestick to the Valve Index or HP Reverb G2 in many ways, but wireless, well, neither of those headsets are even capable of that. But I should mention that even though the wireless is really good, I'm still going to be using my wired index. Wi-Fi 6 in Quest 2 is good, but it ain't that good. So what are my actual thoughts on the Oculus Quest 2? It's a damn good VR headset for a ridiculously low price. For $300, you have the best standalone headset out there and a perfectly capable PC VR headset with specs and support that will last for years. The Quest game catalog has grown pretty strong and more is still coming. Not to mention the PC VR game catalog that's open to you if you decide to dabble into PC games. But it's still not the end-all be-all VR headset. If you don't own a PC, this is your best option, hands down, no questions asked. Just buy a Quest 2 if you want VR. Then build a PC and guess what? You have a decent PC VR headset lying around. But for the PC VR players, the Quest 2 is not the new VR king. It is, however, the new VR standard. In terms of price, capability, ease of use, and features, future headsets will really have to up their game if they want to compete with this headset now. And while Quest 2 is the best available right now for wireless capabilities for PC side, that's about all it has. It doesn't have the clearest lenses or best displays or the highest refresh rate. It doesn't have the best tracking or expandability. And it definitely does not have the best privacy agreement, considering you have to use Facebook to even access the headset. So no Reverb G2 like clarity, no full body tracking or finger tracking, on the controllers that is, there is hand tracking, and no incredible spatial audio like with the Index. And comfort is gonna suffer. But for most people, 
All of those things really don't matter. You just want to get into VR. And for those people that aren't looking to spend a lot of money, but you want something that will do everything you throw at it. While the Quest 2 may not be the best headset ever, it's probably the best headset for you. For me, this headset will not be replacing my Index anytime soon. But if this is your first VR headset, or you're thinking about upgrading from a Vive, or Rift, or Rift S, or Quest, or WMR, I can tell you firsthand that you will be making a solid decision. So, there it is. I will be streaming on Twitch right after this, so you can ask me whatever you'd like about the Quest 2, and I'll answer to the best of my ability. Come on in, and also join in my Discord server. We have a great time. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like 2080Ti, Benji, Marks, Fusion Oak, Gecko86, HCG Randon, KR, Julian, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, Tristan Sloan, True Killa, and Very Evil Shadow. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.